Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and in this video I'll be testing out an alternative way to use Silhouette Mint stamps with a stamp platform. This video was inspired by a question from Be One of the Many, who suggested using something under the cardstock rather than using the Easy Mount Static Cling mounting foam with the Silhouette Mint stamp sheets, like I did in my initial video. If you want to check out that video to see a step by step process with the mounting foam, the link to that should be popping up right about now. I have a stamp here that I made using the Silhouette Mint, and you would typically mount this to the stamp mounts that come in the Mint stamp sheet sets. If you want to use them with a stamp platform, they're too thin to be used alone, and you can mount them to something like the Easy Mount Cling Mounting Foam that I used in my earlier video, and use them with a stamp platform like the Tonic Studios Tim Holtz platform that I have here. But what if you want to use the stamps with a platform and don't have mounting foam or something like it? I'll be showing you how you can use the stamps with a platform, even if you don't have mounting foam. So instead of using something to make the stamp thicker, we're going to be using something under the surface that we're stamping on, in this case cardstock, to help lift the surface up to meet the stamp. But before we get to that, we need to mount the stamp onto the lid of the stamp platform. The lid of the platform that I'm using has two sides, and I'll be using the clear stamp side since it's a little bit thicker. I'm going to add a piece of removable double-sided tape to the back of the stamp to temporarily adhere it to the lid of the platform. Then I'm going to place a mouse pad onto the platform underneath the cardstock. A mouse pad has a good amount of thickness, usually about an eighth of an inch, and it has just the right amount of firmness too. Not too firm, but not too soft. And that should help us get good stamped impressions. I think that two to three sheets of fun foam stacked up would also work well, and there are also silicone rubber pads that you can buy that would work similarly to a mouse pad. But if you have a plain mouse pad like this, then give it a try because you won't need to spend money on another stamping tool if it works out. My mouse pad has curved edges, so I won't be able to place my cardstock in the corner of the stamp platform. This is a little bit of a downside because there's a little less stability in the cardstock placement, but on the upside, the magnets that come with the platform are strong enough that they still work through the thickness of the mouse pad, so I'll add those to keep my cardstock in place. After this, I'll take the stamp that I added the removable double sided tape to earlier and I'll place it tape side up onto the cardstock where I want to stamp it. I have to be careful here because this stamp has already been inked, but if you're using an uninked stamp, you won't have to worry about accidentally pressing it down onto the cardstock or anything like that. Next, I'll bring the lid around to pick up the stamp sheet, and good news, the stamp adhered without a problem, so this means that the mouse pad is thick enough to hopefully give us good results. You can see that I did get a slight bit of a stamped impression on the cardstock when I pressed the lid down to pick up the stamp, but it's not a problem because with a stamp platform, the stamp is already in place and can be stamped multiple times in the exact same place if you don't get a solid impression on the first try. So I'll bring the lid around again, and this time I'll press down for about five seconds so that ink has a little more time to absorb into the cardstock. The impression is still a little bit light on the right side, so I'll bring the lid around again and press for five seconds. The impression on the right side is still a little light, and at this point I thought that it was because I had inked this stamp months ago and the ink was finally drying out. So I ended up re-inking the stamp with the mint brand black ink. After I re-ink the stamp and allow the ink to absorb for about 8 minutes or so, I'll replace the cardstock on the platform with a folded piece of printer paper, and I'll use a folded paper towel to remove some of the excess ink from the stamp. Then I'll repeatedly stamp on the printer paper until I'm getting clean impressions. It usually takes about 10 to 15 or so stamped impressions to clean off all of that excess ink. I'll just fold the printer paper in half again when I need more space to stamp. One thing that I did notice is that if I accidentally stamped over part of another stamped impression, it would sometimes pick up a little bit of the ink from the previous stamped impression and give me a slight shadow for the next few new impressions. So you'll want to avoid overlapping while you're stamping out that excess ink. Okay, now I'm getting much more crisp and clean impressions. So I'll bring my cardstock back in at this point. Since the cardstock is no longer in the same place as it was before, I'll need to remove the stamp from the lid and very carefully place it onto the cardstock, tape side up where I want to stamp it. Be careful not to press down at all on the stamp or drag it or slide it in any way if you need to do this. Next, I'll bring the lid around and press down on the stamp area firmly for about 5 seconds. This impression isn't too bad, but it is lighter toward the lower left side of the stamp, which is something that I didn't expect since I just re-inked the stamp. This is when I realized that the issue was the magnets. 
When you use the mint stamps with mounting foam, the magnets don't interfere with the stamped image because they're right on the surface of the platform. But with the mouse pad, the entire area is raised toward the lid and the magnets create a gap that doesn't allow the stamp to get close enough to the cardstock surface to get a good impression. So I'll remove both of the magnets and try again. If you still want to be able to hold the cardstock in place without the magnets, you can add a piece of the removable double-sided tape to the back of the piece of cardstock, just like I added it to the back of the stamp sheet. You can see that now that the magnets are removed, I'm getting a much more saturated impression. Actually, it's a little bit on the muddy side because now that the stamp is able to press right onto the cardstock without that gap, the remaining excess ink is transferring onto the cardstock. I'll need to stamp out some more impressions to clear up the image and remove the remaining excess ink. After I do this, I'll bring in a clean piece of cardstock and I'll need to repeat the process that I did earlier of peeling the stamp off the lid and very carefully placing it tape side up on the cardstock where I want to stamp it. I'll bring the lid around and press down for about 5 seconds and you can see that I'm now getting a nice crisp and clean stamped impression. I'll just bring that lid around again very quickly to make the impression a little bit darker and here's a close up of the results. I think this result is pretty darn good. To store the stamp, you can pop it into the mount that comes with it without removing the adhesive protective paper from the mount base, then just click the lid on and store it away until you need it again. You can find a full list of supplies used in this video in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you'd like to see more Silhouette Mint stamping videos, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.